All right, welcome back to Around the Bases from 110 Sports. We continue on with our six key storylines from the World Series. And we're going to move on to uh, the big, uh, other big topic that people are really talking about with Game 6, which is Kevin Cash's decision to pull Blake Snell after just 73 pitches, a decision that may have cost the Rays a chance to win the World Series. So, First off, Blake Snell was the only race starter to really deliver strong, a strong outing in the World Series. The 27-year-old left-hander, he took a no-hitter into the fifth inning in Game 2, but he looked even sharper in Game 6, a game, of course, the Rays had to win. He allowed just one hit through five innings and struck out nine. He was incredibly dominant. He recorded a pop-out to start the sixth before giving up a single to Dodgers catcher Austin Barnes. And then Kevin Cash, Ray's manager, had a decision to make. Snell, who hadn't pitched six innings in a game since July of 2019, rarely gets to face many, if any, opposing batters a third time in an individual game. And that's a major aspect of the Ray's pitching philosophy. It's not just with Snell. The top of the lineup was coming up for the Dodgers. But the top of LA's lineup... Mookie Betts, Corey Seager, and Justin Turner were a collective 0 for 6 with 6 strikeouts against Snell. And Snell was at 73 pitches, just 73 pitches, and absolutely dealing. Still, the Rays manager, Kevin Cash, he went to his bullpen. He brought on Nick Anderson, who was one of the best relievers in baseball during the regular season, but had given up a run in six straight postseason games, postseason appearances, I should say. Make it seven. Anderson gave up a double to Betts. Barnes scored on a wild pitch, and Seager's grounder scored Betts from third. Mookie added an insurance run with a solo homer in the eighth inning, but those two runs actually proved to be enough. Dodgers win 3-1. World Series over for the Rays. That one pitching change was the on-the-field story of Game 6, and a discussion that has been continuing and brewing about the role of analytics in baseball suddenly reignited on another level on the national stage. And it's a discussion that will, of course, continue into the offseason for years to come, and it's a complex topic. It's not something as simple as whether someone is for analytics or anti-analytics or for analytics or want to go with their gut. It's not as simple as this side or that side. Numbers and analytics, they're an important tool, and they can be used as rationale for all different types of decisions. They're also not the end-all, be-all. They're not the be-all and end-all. Numbers are not everything. But of course, there's all different ways you can look at the numbers, right? The Rays have decided to base their well, a lot of their philosophy for starting pitching on the numbers that suggest, that show that pitchers, their pitchers aren't going to do as well the third time through the opponent's batting order as the first two times and that their relievers have a better shot overall. And thus, they don't allow their starters to go very deep in games often. But there's also other numbers you can look at from Mookie Betts' numbers against lefties to the 0 for 6 to the numbers of the pitcher that the Rays brought on in uh, Nick Anderson. So there's a lot of different factors at play here. One thing that was incredibly clear, though, is the outrage over Cash's decision. The baseball world exploded. The pitcher himself, Snell, he turned away and shouted an expletive at his, as his manager headed to the mound, saying post-game, the hardest thing for me is I was rolling, I was in a groove, I felt like I had them guessing. It's just tough for me. It's going to be tough for me to accept that. That's Blake Snell post-game. Uki Betts said he didn't understand the move, telling reporters, I'm not sure why. I'm not going to ask any questions. He was pitching a great game. It seems like that's all we needed, that being the pitching change. And even Snell's teammates, Cash's own players, weren't afraid to express their displeasure with, after, with the situation after the game. Kevin Kiermaier, the center fielder, saying, I don't care what the numbers say. There weren't many guys that were making contact against Snell. 
So very, very clear outrage about this decision. First of all, I think one thing that's actually, and I just mentioned it a minute ago, but I think one thing that's not being weighed as heavily in this discussion as it should be is who they brought on to replace Snell. They brought on the struggling Nick Anderson, who was showing the worst fastball velocity and movement of his entire career in his most recent appearances. So, yes, there's the fact of who was coming up and their success in that game against Snell or lack of success 0 for 6 were the top three in the Dodgers order. There's Betts' numbers against lefty. But there's also just the flaw in the Rays' plan if the Rays' plan was to have Nick Anderson be the first guy out of their bullpen, which appear, appears to be have been the case, that that was their plan all along. We don't, we don't know that. We don't know what circumstances they might have brought somebody else in. But that's a major flaw in their plan. This is a guy, again, who was showing the worst velocity and worst movement of his pitches in his entire career, had given up runs in six straight appearances, was walking batters. He was a mess. He's a great pitcher. I think he'll get on track next year. He was great in the regular season. Sometimes pitchers just go through these rough stretches. But that's a major flaw in the Rays' plan as well, aside from just pulling Snell. And here's the other thing. I said that Cash had a decision to make with Snell. That's how I phrased that a minute ago. But the problem is he made that decision before the game even started. Snell was never going to see the Dodgers line up a third time, basically no matter the circumstances. And that's the problem. It's great to have a strategy. It's great to have a plan for your pitching. But Kevin Cash just did not adjust to what was actually happening on the field, in the game, in front of him, in a game that the Rays absolutely had to win. The long-term strategy, that the overall plan for the Rays, that I'm not criticizing their system. It's a system that got them the AL pennant, and they deserved it. But in this individual game, you're not playing for a system that works in the long haul. You have to win the game that's in front of you. And Cash was not adjusting to the game's circumstances. On the other side, Dave Roberts, who has gotten plenty of criticism for his handling of pitchers, much of it is, you know, deserve. But Dave Roberts did adjust in this game. He pu pulled Tony Gonsolin, who he said was making a regular type of start. They wanted five or six innings from him. They pulled Tony Gonsolin. He pulled Tony Gonsolin for a group of relievers that were great the rest of the way. Gonsolin got a short hook, didn't go two innings. And the relievers that Roberts brought on, it was great. Now, of course, you know, you can't, it's tricky. You can't just point to, if it had gone differently for the Dodgers and the relievers, it might have been a different story. But it, particularly with this game, Gonsolin, Robert said he wanted five or six innings out of him, but he clearly did not have his best stuff. He only gave up, I think, a run. Oh, of course, yeah, because the Rays only scored one run, the Randy Rosarena homer. But it was clear he was not going to make it five or six innings in, in, without giving up more runs. And so Roberts adjusted to the game's circumstances. Kevin Cash did not. The Rays held, he held firm to his system that Blake Snell was not going to face a third a batter for a third time in this game, no matter his circumstances. In the circumstances, in Cash's eyes, Snell's job was to go out there and go through the Dodgers lineup two times, and he did that, and that's it, you're done. That's it. And that's just a flawed approach. And it's not an approach that's all about second guessing. There was myself, everybody, a lot of people were first guessing this when the change happened. This is not just about you know, second guessing after the fact. It was just a bad approach by Kevin Cash not adapting, not adjusting. But it doesn't mean that the Rays don't have a good system, a good approach. It doesn't mean that analytics that analytics are the problem, broadly. You know who's one of the most analytic who what team relies on analytics more than a lot of most others in the league? The Dodgers. And Andrew Friedman, their president of baseball operations, they're heavy. I mean, that's big analytics and numbers and all these things. And looking at the data that's in decision-making, that's a big thing for the Dodgers. 
So let's not pretend that it was like old school Dodgers versus analytical Rays and the Rays lost out and analytics lost. That was not the case. It was just a lack of adjusting, a lack of flexibility on the part of Kevin Cash in that move. And look, we also don't know that that move would have changed things. Snell could have given up a home run to Mookie Betts, to Justin Turner. Things could have, anything could have happened here. And the Rays very well still losing this series. But it's a decision that still Rays fans could be looking back on for years. It's a decision that could haunt them for years to come. So that's that storyline. Storyline five. We'll go through these last ones here a little bit faster. They're not as big. Corey Seager, as we mentioned, deservedly named series MVP, but it was Randy Rosarena, the Rays outfielder, who rewrote the record books with one of the best postseason performances we've ever seen by a player in the postseason, of course. The 25-year-old outfielder extended his big league record with his 10th home run of the postseason, now has the record for most home runs, most hits, most total bases in a single postseason of any player ever. Rosarena batted 364 with three homers and four RBI in the World Series, but it was also clear going in that even if he did have a performance like that, he was going to be unable to do the entire, all of the offensive heavy lifting for the Rays on his own against a team as good as the Dodgers. He was going to need support. And while he got some support in Game 2 in Brandon Lau's two home runs and in Game 4 with three home mates, uh, three teammates and him uh, combining to homer in four straight innings, and then Brett Phillips' clutch hit in the ninth and the Rays walked off, it, it wasn't enough support around Rosarena with consistency. In Game 6, Rosarena was 2-for-4 with that home run. The rest of the Rays, 3-for-29. No runs scored, no RBI. Now, the Rays made it clear this postseason that their AL best record during the regular season was absolutely no fluke. Tampa Bay is an outstanding team, well-deserving of their AL pennant. And had they won the World Series, they would have been well-deserving of that as well. It's an outstanding club in an outstanding approach, generally speaking. But with their pitchers posting a collective 5.54 ERA in this series, they were never going to outslug the Dodgers on their way to a title. The Dodgers were the better team here, and that's what we're going to talk about in a second with this final point. But the Rays were an outstanding ball club that should absolutely be proud of the season they had. It was, it was an incredible season. But as we had a tr transition here into my final storyline, the Dodgers simply outplayed the Rays. They were the better team. They were baseball's best team, a club that led the league in home runs, runs scored, and ERA during the regular season. They continued to show the combination of star power and depth that got them there in the World Series. The Dodgers showed how in 2020, they were not just the sport's most talented team, but also the sport's most complete team. Nine different Dodgers homered in the World Series, the most for any team in a single postseason, a single postseason series in MLB history, but they also weren't reliant on the long ball to score. Dodgers starters, led by Kershaw and Walker Buehler, who has cemented himself as one of the best big game pitchers in baseball. Dodgers starters posted a 2.84 ERA in this series. LA's relief core, a source of concern relative to the Rays heading into this series. Well, they bested their Tampa Bay counterparts in ERA, and as I mentioned, they tossed seven and a third innings of two-hit, scoreless ball with 12 strikeouts and no walks to finish out Game 6. Julio Arias, who was great this postseason, struck out four over two and a third perfect innings to close out Game 6. Like I said, Dave Roberts showed flexibility in adjusting from his original plan for Gonsolin to go deep in this game. For the better part of the last decade, the Dodgers front office has worked to build a team able to withstand the worst case scenarios. They had pitching depth. They had positional flexibility, a robust, a robust farm system, and immense financial resources to make mid-season moves. The Dodgers had it all with the goal of being able to withstand whatever that, that given season threw at them 
and break their decades-long title drought. LA came so close in recent years, falling short in the Fall Classic in 2017 and 2018. So perhaps it's actually fitting that in a year and in a season where everything has been off balance, one aspect which just couldn't seem to get aligned as it should finally reached equilibrium. The Dodgers refused to be denied again and are now on top of the baseball world for the first time in over three decades. 